Will you please welcome from the Institute of Agriculture and Environment, Heather Collins, and the title of her presentation is Trusting Relationships for Environmental Change. Welcome, Heather. Jim is a dairy farmer. He's 58 and he runs the family farm with his wife, his sons and their families. Jim cares about the environment and every year he spends money on improving the farm's environmental performance. As Jim said to me, I'm not an environmental vandal. But here's the issue. Farming has contributed to a decline in our water quality and there's little research on the farmer's perspectives. I used case study method to interview 12 dairy farmers, including Jim, and people who work with these farmers. I learned that farmers are making changes to reduce the amount of nitrogen and phosphorus entering waterways. So Jim and the other farmers, they've fenced streams and put in bridges to keep cows out of water. They've changed their fertilizer, the crops they grow, where they winter their cows, and how they manage effluent, it's the cow pee and the cow poo. Still, I wanted to know more. How do farmers learn? Who do they trust? How do social norms shape behaviour? Jim learns from people he trusts. His family, the farmers in his community, and his farm consultant. Jim goes to meetings and field days. He talks with Dairy and Z and Fonterra staff, and he reads extensively. What really blew my mind was the power of social norms. Norms are our expectations of behaviour. They aren't discussed, but everyone knows what they are. Jim called them the unwritten code. Farmers accept that you don't put effluent in waterways. If effluent is in water, the unwritten code says it's okay to confront that farmer. But farmers would be unlikely to bring the authorities, and Jim called that dobbing in or telling on the farmer. Dobbing in the farmer breaks the unwritten code and reduces trust between farmers. And trusting relationships are the key to behaviour change. My research will shed light on farmers' dynamics of trust and how the powerful, unwritten code shapes farmer behaviour change. It will help policymakers and others work with rather than seemingly against farmers. So, next time in Europe, think of farmers like Jim who are making changes so we can all enjoy clean water. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Look at that. Three minutes, uh, two minutes, 50. Perfect. Ooh. Judges. Heather, well done. I think there is no other issue uh, that is so pressing on our community um, other than water quality in the 21st century. And I think the way in which you have put that at the heart of that, uh, that challenge um, around, you know, how farmers are sometimes, I think, stereotyped in specific ways... Uh, to get behind their learning and think about the multivariate factors. I think it was really, really smart, really clever, really clearly expressed. You've got a huge amount of passion. I like the pace at which you deliver. Uh, I'm a historian and I could understand what you're saying, so thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Heather. I, I, um, I was taken by the topic in the introduction, which tend to suggest that farmers generally are agnostic about this issue. Uh, and uh, what was poignant for me, really, was to know that there was a code which really brings the question about compliance theory and practice and the regulation and the power of the regulator and the power of the regulation and, compl and compliance practices to change behaviour. So um, a, a really uh, telling insight. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for Heather Collins. Fantastic thesis and great presentation.